Welcome to 3 Minutes with Arc 2. I'm a radiological scientific officer, and this is our survival complex. In this video, I'm going to explain to you about the use of dosimeters. This video is on using a dosimeter. In another video, I explain the difference between the dosimeters and rate meters. And still another one, I explain how to charge a dosimeter. That is to zero it out and to have it ready to use. It is not a bad idea to have two or three dosimeters. This way, when one uses the dosimeter, they can make sh uh, they can sort of take a vote between them to see if they all read the same, and to see if they don't, what well, decide which rate you're going to trust uh, among them. It is important about dosimeters, as I've explained many times, just as with rate meters, that you be sure to get the right rate, that a dosim dosimeter that might measures in ronkins, not in millironcans, which are just one, a millironcan is just one thousandth of a ronkin. When you wear a dosimeter, most people wear them up here in their pocket. Actually, that's the wrong place. The dosimeter should be well worn on one's belt so that when they're walking, that is the place where the measurement is nearest to the vital organs. And so, because there is a reducing of the radiation between the ground and the height, and so you don't want to get too high up to the pocket, but right where the vital organs are by the belt. On the other hand, if one wore it down beside their leg or on their boot, they'd be too close to the radiation. That's a thing to consider though, because that is where children receive radiation, down at your boot level. If a little small child, say four or five years old, is toddling along there, they're getting all that radiation right down near the ground. That is why it is important if a child is taken out in an area where there's radiation to carry them up on your shoulders to keep them up from it as much as possible. Not only are they closer to it, children are more susceptible to it. This is why we try very much to keep children away from radiation. Another consideration about dosimeters is to make sure that you have a dosimeter with the right scale. A dosimeter that has a scale of 10R, while it may measure the radiation very well, it'll just go off scale very quickly if the radiation is 20R in the area where you are, or even if it's only, the radiation is only 5R, then within two hours that dosimeter would be off scale if you were out in the radiation four hours you'd have no idea how much radiation you had received. It's best in most cases to have a dosimeter that is say in the 200 to 600 R range and then you can be certain how much radiation has actually been received. With a larger scale dosimeter you do not have to recharge it every time that you use it. You just need to make note of where, what the reading is when you send somebody out with it and then the reading on it when they return and the difference between that is how much radiation they received during that time. But the important thing with uh, about uh, keeping track of the radiation is that you need a notebook with a tab in it, a sheet in it, for every person that you are going to be keeping track of their radiation so that you can keep track each time they go out how much radiation they receive so you can add it up so that if they go out and they get 10 rankings this time and next time they get 30 that'd be 40 total and you just keep adding it up so that you know at some point, you don't want that person going out again. When you send people out into radiation, 
it's not necessary that every person have a dosimeter. One dosimeter, or if you want to send out two or three, with a group of 20 people is quite adequate. Whatever one person receives, that is what everybody is going to receive. And so you don't have to have a dosimeter for everybody that you send out in a group. The dosimeter measures how much radiation that one receives from the ground. And because when we wear it at the belt, that's the vital organs and where they're going to receive uh, of the radiation coming up from the ground when you're walking. But if one were to sleep on the ground, then the radiation the detector would be just right flat down on the ground and it's going to receive a lot more radiation. The body is going to receive a lot more radiation. And this is why it is best if when one is in the area with radiation not to sit on the ground or to lie down on the ground but to move through the area as quickly as possible. Thank you for watching and please remember that Arc 2 is not just about your survival. It's about service to humanity and preparing to reconstruct society.